Good evening, everybody. We are so glad that you have come back this evening to be with us for a very special service. Uh, we welcome you back in. For those that are watching on the stream, uh, we hate that you couldn't be here with us in person, but we're welcome. we want to welcome you as a part of this service as well. Uh, we get to do a lot of great things as a church. Uh, one of the greatest things we get to do is to see men step up to serve in the next level of service that God calls them to. And that's exactly what we're celebrating and what we're following the Lord's command in this evening. Um, this evening we've got Corey Harrington, who we love so much, and uh, who is uh, who not only is a special day for deacon ordination for him, but it's also his only sons, first sons, greatest sons, first birthday too. So we're excited about that, and uh, we'll always tell Nolan that's why we did it today, right? So <laughs> Uh, but we love Corey and we love Erica and their family and uh, so excited to be able to, to have this time to where God has already set Corey apart to serve as a deacon. This is just our opportunity to come alongside in obedience to God and to agree with him in that and to support and to celebrate what God's doing in Corey's life and celebrate what he is going to bring through Corey in the blessings that he brings to us here in our church. So we're so glad that you're here this evening and uh, that you're sharing in this moment as well. In just a moment, Grayson's going to come and lead us in a word of prayer, and after that prayer, you're going to get a chance to hear from Corey himself, and uh, I've already told him that if, you know, I'm only going to speak twice as long as he speaks, so uh, however long he goes, that's when you know he, no, I'm kidding, but anyway, we're going to open up the floor and let you hear from Corey's heart. He's going to share a little bit of his testimony with you, and uh, we had a great time with the ordination council uh, where he got to share with them, and, and the men really shared some great encouragement uh, with him, and, uh, and so we've been just really excited to get to this point today, so. Grayson, I'm going to ask you to come on up and pray for us, and then Corey, you're up next. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for bringing us all here this evening uh, to celebrate Corey and his ordination as a deacon. Um, I pray that uh, the ordination council uh, went to, to your, your plan and your will, and that um, everything that we think, say, and do going forward, uh, and um, as a church body, um, will be delightful to you. Um, thank you again for bringing us here uh, in worship. In our pray. Amen. All right. Well, I'll, I'll make it short since he's going to preach twice as long. Um, so for anybody that doesn't know, um, I actually, I have, I got my master's degree in accounting from Southern and I switched this year and started coaching basketball. Um, and that's, to me, it's relevant to my testimony um, because when I was at, when I was in school, when I was in the 10th grade, there were two guys that were um, upperclassmen that were in front of me. And they really kind of helped me get to the point where I am uh, because they, the way that they played basketball uh, they didn't care who, who was there, who watched, what happened, whether it was good, whether it was bad. Um, they always put Christ first. And so that really kind of stuck out to me. And when I was in 10th grade and I had these guys ahead of me, I remember one day I was at Concord Baptist Church and um, they were, the, James Fortenberry was up there preaching and I just could not wait to to get down to the invitation um, that God was just talking to me and he was saying, look, I, I know you know who I am. Uh, you accepted me when you were, young, when you were younger, um, but you know, you're not living the way that you're supposed to. You're not you know, sh showing Christ through your actions, through everything that you're doing. And so invitation came. I went down and you know, I said, you know, I'm not living the way I'm supposed to, but from now, on, now forward, um, I want to, everything that I do, I want to exemplify you and live the way that I'm supposed to. Um, and so, like I said, I just switched to be a basketball coach because through those two guys showing that, you know, you can use sports for so many things and you can teach people to, to work hard and do things the right way, um, that it was always something that I said that I wanted to do, and it was a way for me to kind of exemplify Christ through my actions, you know, so I try and be the best teacher and the best coach that I can be um, and to show Christ through my actions, doing that on the basketball court, just how two other guys 
just by living their life the way that they were supposed to and exemplifying Christ, you know, helped me get to where I am today. So that's kind of uh, my testimony in a nutshell. So thank you. Um, so as uh, the ordination council has met, and we recommend that Corey come on as a deacon and serve at Harrisville Baptist Church. We did have a great time with our deacon ordination council, and uh, I tell you, they were so encouraging and supportive and you know, the Bible says we're supposed to test this man, and I feel like you, you, got, you, you, got, you passed the test that was put before you, but they, they were really kind to you, so I'm thankful for that. And I appreciate the recommendation that Grayson just shared with us uh, out of, uh, coming out of that, that's, uh, that council. You know, what we do when we do deacon ordination is strictly and, and simply from Scripture, um, and we, we see what God has set up. This is not something that we decide as a church that this is the way we want to do our government and in our, in our church affairs, and so we're going to do deacons. This is something that, that the Lord in, in the early church, not long after Jesus had ascended to heaven, that he, he instituted. And uh, we're going to read a little bit from the book of Acts here in just a moment uh, about how that worked. Uh, but I'm, I want to say just some general things about what it means to, to serve as a deacon at Harrisville Baptist Church under God's guidance and under his institution. Uh, I'm thankful and now in my second go-round, uh, first as a very young man just out of college, single, and uh, thought I was happy, but thanks to some deacons here in this church, I met someone who would really, really make me be sure that I was happy almost all the time. No, all the time, I'm kidding. Uh, but, uh, but they were very gracious to me. Uh, many of the deacons that were deacons 20 years ago here at Harrisville have had a huge and, and made a huge impact in my life uh, in ministry in so many different ways. And now to be back to pastor and to serve alongside with those same, some of those same guys again, as well as new ones that God has brought together and brought on, um, it, it's, it's an exciting thing. There's a great legacy of deacons here at Harrisville Baptist Church. There's a, there's a great testimony uh, from so many things. That none of the men that have served as deacons in this church uh, or that will serve as deacons in this church have been perfect, uh, but they have, they have worked in, in just the same way as you heard today at the council, in just the same way as you've experienced in the meeting that you've already been a part of as a deacon. They, they worked hard, and they work hard to submit to the Lord's will, to lead and to minister to this church well. And so it's, it's, that, it's that framework, Corey, that you step into as a new deacon here. Uh, and it's a, it's a great one. It's one that you have and I know will more and more as you serve learn from. Um, and it's, it's one that our church benefits greatly from having not just a good group of deacons, but this group deacons, inactive as well as active, uh, that serve our church. And so it's just so, it, it's so encouraging to me to not only have a great group of deacons, a great body of deacons, but to see God continuing to add people to that. And there's more to come, but this year we have one in Corey who, uh, who is somewhat new to our church. He, ha he did not grow up at Harrisville Baptist Church, as many folks have, uh, but he's been welcomed in. And uh, Corey, uh, I've had a great time getting to know him over this last year and a half or so, and we, we've now... Now that he's in teaching and coaching, we get to share some old stories and, and have some common ground there. Um, and, and I've really enjoyed getting to see Corey's heart. Um, it's tough when your father-in-law is part of the council, <laughs> but, and, and he is and he was. He also is serving right alongside with you uh, as a deacon. And, and, uh, but to, to hear what, what Eric said about his son-in-law, uh, I can definitely echo those things, that to watch him uh, just as, as Corey interacts with our church as he, as he is a husband to Erica, as he is a father to Nolan, uh, as he is a son to his parents, as well as a son-in-law uh, to Erica's parents, and, and all the relationships he has, I've just, all, I've continued to be impressed, continued to be blessed by, Corey, who you are and who God is growing you more and more to be, even as you minister side by side with us. And so, as we think about this, and as we went through the time of the Deacon Council this afternoon, uh, a phrase came to my mind, and I don't know where the phrase came from, I've heard it several different ways. But I think since, since you're coaching now and you played sports growing up, you can probably get it this way. Uh, and that phrase or that, that saying is this, is that we, we win together and we lose alone, right? The idea there is, is that when, when a team is put together uh, and they do what they're supposed to do together, good things come about. And when they are put together as a team and they don't function as a team, well, 
Good things usually don't come about. In fact, bad things usually come about. Uh, a team in sports, they're, they're put together for a lot of reasons, the least of which is certainly not to be able to win, right? That's kind of the whole idea of competing is to go and to compete, not just to do your best, but to actually succeed. And that's, uh, that's something that is a, as a team that God has called together of men as our deacons, I think the same principle holds true. I think that, that, that as, as you heard and as you've seen and as I appreciate so much about our men uh, that serve as deacons here at our church, that, that when we are together, even though we are all very different, even though we all have different concepts, different backgrounds, different opinions, different gifts, and different shortcomings, when we're all together on something, good things come about. We, we win as that team. Um, and, and if we ever find ourselves separated or acting as individuals instead of as a team, well, the good things don't come the way we'd like for them to. Uh, but I think that, that because of who you are, because of what you're doing now as a, as a vocation in, in teaching and coaching, you have a, 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 a even extra special way of understanding that idea of togetherness that, that God has called you into uh, in being part of this deacon body. Uh, looking at scripture this evening, just for a few moments, we, we see in Acts chapter 6, we see that the early church is growing, it's, it's really blowing up in so many ways, hundreds and thousands of people are, being, are coming to Christ, putting their faith in him as a result of what the Holy Spirit's doing through the work and the ministry of the disciples. And, and what ends up happening is, is there's some trouble arising, right? I mean, just they have some problems. And so in Acts chapter 6, beginning with verse 1, we see what this trouble is. And we read there, it says, In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to, to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and of wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attentions to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. And so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. You see, God orders his church. He keeps his church in order. He set up his church with order. He will continue to keep his church in order. And one of the groups of people that he calls upon to, to carry that out and to make that work is deacons. We know that deacons, as we said already, they've been instituted as a position in a, in a New Testament church by God himself. He set us up to have that order that they are a huge part of keeping. We see here that they had a problem um, and the problem, they must have been Baptists back then because the problem was over food, right? I mean, they, 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 they were, they were uh, part of their ministry was to share food with the church and with the, the people that were part of the church. And, and, and so you had people of different backgrounds. You had people that, that were having some trouble understanding why one was doing one thing and they didn't think the other was doing enough. They, they just saw some, some differences and they started to have some conflict over them. And the first thing that we see here in verse 1 is, is that well, the deacons being instituted, they became necessary to help deal with this problem. God's church continues to have problems arise. We continue to have differences of opinion, differences of practice, differences of understanding, and differences of preference. We, we always have that because we're going to have people being part of the church. If it was just a church of one, there'd probably still be some disagreement somewhere along the line. But certainly with churches of many, we're going to have those things. But these deacons were, and deacons now today in 2020 are necessary. They're necessary, and they're only necessary not because somebody thought they would be a good idea, even though the early church agreed that they were, it was a good idea to have these men, but they were necessary because God said they were necessary. They were necessary because there was more to do in the church as the church was beginning at that point to grow, and as it continues to grow even today, they were necessary because there was more to do than just the 12 disciples could do. 
The second part of that that we see in verse 2 is, is not only are they necessary, but they're peacemakers. They, the thing that they were first called to do was to come in and between two different groups of people, two different peoples, peoples with backgrounds that were very different from one another and their history was different, their first task was to come in and focus on making peace. Deacons are necessary, but they're peacemakers as well. And they are always going to have that part. You heard this afternoon from, from so many of our deacons who have served for a lot of years in this church that there are going to be some times where there's going to be disagreement and people are going to come to whatever deacon or deacons they think that need to, they need to come to. Maybe it's they come to us because they, they, they think we'll agree with them. Maybe they come to you because they think that you're on the other side or whatever, but they're going to come and talk about it and, and they're going to come and have that and more than one person is going to come. <laughs> and more than one person, as they come, they'll each have a different slant on it. They'll have a different viewpoint on it. And the deacon's ministry, then and now and forever, part of it will be to be a peacemaker in that. Not to pick a side and champion that side at, at to the detriment of the other side. Because at the end of the day, if it's, a, if it's a, an issue of difference of opinion or preference or understanding in the church, it's amongst the people of God. And so we're all on the same side, and we don't need to make these artificial sides out of these disagreements. But deacons get to come in day by day, as it comes, as it's necessary, and help to make peace. And that's exactly what these men did getting started. We also see in verse 2 that the way that they made peace was by being servants. You know, if, if you had to sum up deacon, really if you had to sum up any ministry in, in two short words, it would be, to me, servant leadership. And notice that servant in that phrase, in that, those two words, comes first. We have to serve if we're to lead. No one has ever called uh, or ordained, no church has ever ordained a deacon to be a boss, just simply for the sake of being a boss. Certainly, deacons have to make all kinds of decisions together. They do it in the context of that great team. They do it to try to make peace. They have always, though, church has, churches have always, and we even tonight, ordained Corey as a servant. Not that we're above him and that he owes us something, but no, that he would follow Christ's example and that he would serve in order to lead, just the way that Christ served instead of lording over his, his position. And so we see that deacons are peacemakers, they're necessary, but they're also servants, and that's how they go about their work. In verses 3 and 4, we see pretty, ser pretty seriously that they're, they're trustworthy. Can you imagine for just a second what was going on here? Here are the 12, the, the, the disciples, the apostles, who have been at the forefront of sharing the gospel with so many people, seeing so many people come to Christ, and getting to this predicament they're in where they're having all this dissension and disagreement, can you imagine them believing and trusting that the sharing of the gospel was more important than getting down into the, the division that was going on, right? They did not want to be, and God kept them from being distracted by these problems, but instead, God brought these trustworthy men, these first deacons, just as he brings deacons who are trustworthy today, and as he always will for as long as he's in the business of having deacons, he makes them trustworthy men so that as the sharing of the gospel is going on, including through them, they are also trustworthy to be able to handle the tasks that God has called them. And so deacons not only are necessary, and they're not only peacemakers, they're not only servants, but they, they're trustworthy. And Corey, I've seen that you're trustworthy in so many ways. I mean, you know, thankfully we've not had too many critical things that we've had to, you know, deal with that. But I've seen just, one, I know Erica a little bit, and I know that if you weren't trustworthy, she'd be sitting with somebody else tonight, right? And, and I know Eric and Karen pretty well, and I know that as they've taken you in, and, and the way they talk about you, which you probably owe them some money, by the way, uh, they, they talk about you as being trustworthy. When I see you with your new son and see just this year of him growing a lot, <laughs> in a lot of ways, and it, I see that he trusts you uh, and has trusted you from the moment he met you. Uh, you're trustworthy, and, and that is a, a, such a, a key part of being a deacon. Lastly, this evening, in verses 5 and 6, we see that deacons are called. They're called. And in fact, what we're doing tonight, this ordination, is, is simply an agreement with the call of God that has been shown to us on your life to serve as a deacon. Uh, we'll, in just a few moments, we'll present you with a, a certificate of ordination. Now, it's not a magic piece of paper, right? It's not a sacred scroll or anything. It's simply just us saying, as Harrisville Baptist Church, that we agree with God 
that God has a call on your life to be a deacon. We see in, these, in, in the first uh, selection of these first seven that they were presented to the church and the church agreed. They thought it was a good idea to call some men and then also agreed that it was a good idea to call those particular men. And they recognized God's call on those men's lives to serve in the way that God had called them to. So never forget that as you are, as you're, you're, you're knowing that you're necessary to be here, <laughs> that, that you need to be continuing to make peace through serving people, and as you continue to, to show your trustworthiness, never let it slip your mind that it's God that calls you to that. It's not something that you just chose to do one day. It's not something you sat in a pew and thought, well, one day I'd like to be one of those guys. You know, I'd really love to help lead a business meeting. You know, <laughs> nobody says that, right? Uh, but no, it's that God has called you. So in the days that, that it's great to be a deacon, in the days that it's, that it's you know, enjoyable, when it's fun, and when you're enjoying great agreement and, and, and great you know, blessings in the church, know that that's part of God's calling in your life. But when it's tough, and it will be tough, any position of servant leadership is, know that he's also called you in those times too. And, uh, and just like those deacons that were selected a little over 2,000 years ago, well, he's got you here for a reason. And the reason is exactly what we see in verse 7. I'm going to read verse 7 again because this is our goal. This is what we want to see our deacons be a part of and what they are already a part of and what Corey is stepping into as well. He says in verse 7, it says, So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Why would Luke record that priests were being saved? Well, it speaks to the power of God's gospel going out through unified believers. That, that even priests who believed themselves and who were indeed set apart themselves and called by God to do things a certain way, even they were called to put their faith in Christ as opposed to in the law. That's the power that we minister in. That's the power that you minister in. That's the power that these men, as well as all of our church, ministers in together. And so, Corey, this evening, I'm so excited. I'm so thankful that, you are, uh, that you've agreed to serve, that even before that, God put it upon the hearts of of the people in our church to nominate you and, and that, that he's brought you to this point to be the, such a great part of our fellowship here, a great part of our faith family that you would serve in this capacity. And we want to make sure you know that I as the pastor, the other men as deacons, the rest of this church, those that are here, those that are watching on live stream, we're here for you. We're here with you. We need things from you. We need ministry and love and service, but we're also here to give those same things to you. And so this evening, our, our final charge to you is simply follow the Lord. Follow him in every part of your life and just know that this is a, a new avenue that you get to live out and follow the call of the Lord Jesus in your life. Continue to do that. And, and man, you won't always be perfect. <laughs> you won't always make the right call. None of us do. But you'll know that you're right where God has brought you to be. Thankful for you. And I'm here for you. Thankful for your family. I'm thankful to know where God has already brought you. And really excited to see where he's going to take you and take us together in the days to come. You come into a time where very few deacon bodies in the history of the Christian church have come out of a pandemic trying to figure out how to do church. You'll get to be part of those decisions, and God will lead you accordingly. You come in at a very um, serious and sober, but I think a very opportune time to see God do some amazing, amazing work. We're excited for you. Let's pray together. Lord God, I'm so thankful for Corey. I thank you for how you've called him to be a part of our church and now called him to serve you and to serve us and to serve with us as a deacon. Lord God, in just a moment as our deacons come, as our ordained men come and pray for and over Corey, Lord, I ask, Father, that you would guide their prayers, that you would hear their prayers, and Father, that we would all be praying your will for him. God, I thank you that you choose to call men to serve you in your kingdom. I thank you to be one of them and to be amongst so many of them. Father God, would you bless Corey in this time. Let these words that are prayed just between you and the men that will pray them in him and his wife standing here today. God, would you let these be encouraging words. Would you let them be those sources of strength as they follow your word in the days and the weeks, the months, the years to come as he serves as a deacon. Oh, God, we thank you, Father, for what we do now in laying on of hands and praying for. Father, we do in worship of you and in edification for Corey. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
our ordained men have, have met. They've recommended to us as a church that Corey be accepted. We've been able to share just a moment of God's word to charge him towards that end. And so we're going to invite him to come up. And Corey, if you'll kneel right here. Erica, if you'll come, you don't have to kneel. You can stand right beside him. Uh, if you'll face that way, that'd be fine. And uh, Erica, if you'll stand right beside him. Now, Corey, I won't tell you, when they ordained me sitting on that same place right there, some of them wanted to put, like, their full body weight and, like, three elephants with them. So it's okay to switch knees every once in a while, all right? <laughs> this is such a sweet part of a deacon ordination service, is the opportunity for ordained men who God has already been using and continues to use to come and pray and to lay hands, just as the early church did over those first deacons, upon this new deacon. So all of our ordained men, if you would, if you just kind of keep a little space between you, if you come over to my left, your right, and, uh, and get started, we'll have just a moment where you can come through and pray. Take your time as God leads you this evening.
for you for Erica as well. Lord God, we are so thankful, again, Father, for the gift that is Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you, Father, that you have seen fit, even though we don't deserve forgiveness, and we certainly don't deserve to be a useful part of your kingdom, you've seen fit through Christ to draw us to be that very thing. I thank you for Corey, for his wife Erica, for his son Nolan, for all of their family. Lord, I thank you that they're a part of our church, your church here at Harrisville. Lord God, we pray nothing but blessings and encouragement upon both of them, and Corey especially as a deacon. Father, we know that there are days that are hard, but Father, we pray that you would make there be many more days that it's so easy to feel the joy of serving you. And Lord, so that in those hard times, Father, that he will continue to be true to you in serving you in faithfulness and obedience. Lord God, we pray, Father, for our church, for all of our ordained men, for all those that would, that would endeavor day by day to do your will in serving and leading this church. We thank you for bringing Corey into that fold. We thank you for the input and the many blessings of his giftedness that you're going to share through him with us. Father, we thank you for the impact that he has had and is having and will have on hearts of people, young and old alike, in every part of his life, especially as he serves as a deacon here, Lord, for Christ. So, Father, would you be lifted up in all that he does in serving in this calling that you have brought him to? Father, would you supply him as only you can? Would you, would you strengthen him to rise above all the things and all the ways in which he'll be tempted and, Father, in which the, the enemy would want to lead him astray? Father, help him to be faithful to you to rest in your mercy each and every day, and to serve and lead as you've called him to. We celebrate you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask Grayson if he'll come back up. I'm going to hand it to you, and you can hand it to him. It'll be like a relay race. <laughs> We're so excited just with a small token of, uh, of, of how proud of Corey we are and how excited we are to have him as a deacon to bring him with this certificate. Folks, ordinarily we'd have a, an opportunity for you to come by and to, and to talk. I think we're, we're a small enough crowd in here where we can do that and be safe. You just be safe as you do that. Ordinarily we'd also have a time of fellowship maybe with some food in it. We're not able to do that tonight though, Corey. So that just means you can go and check our fantasy score because uh, he and I are going against each other in the semifinals tonight. So uh, anyway, all that said, you do come and encourage Corey and uh, continue to lift him up in prayer and uh, as he serves as one of our new deacons this year, and uh, we're praying for all the men in our church that as God would call them to this same place, uh, that we'll be able to celebrate that in God's timing as well. Corey, we love you, and we're so thankful for you. At this time, we are dismissed. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. That may be so, maybe so. I, I, I'll tell you what, he may, he's got a, a lot of big shoes to fill, though. <laughs> so. Mr. JP, I wanted you to know how special it was to see you praying over someone who's pretty special in your family. So thank you for that. All right. Yep. Miss.